Uh, my name is Pedro Boareto, a family farming specialist at FAO's Regional Office for Latin America and the Caribbean and coordinator of several projects. I would like to welcome you all to this third session of the cycle of exchanges of experiences on registers for family farming. Uh, before we begin, I would like to remind you that this event has simultaneous interpretation into Spanish, English, French, Arabic, and Portuguese. Uh, you have a globe icon uh, on the lower part of your screen, and there you can choose your language. And the purpose of the cycle of exchanges on family farming registries is to promote cooperation and the exchange of experiences uh, on registries and based on the pillars of the global action a global plan of action of the United Nations decade on family farming and the priorities set out in Latin America and the Caribbean in the Charter of Santiago de Chile in 2022. This uh, uh, forum is a, a space for dialogue that seeks to share lessons learned and challenges encountered in development of family farming registers and their linkage to policies to strengthen the sector worldwide. This event is being developed through the Regional Technical Platform on Family Farming, managed by the FAO Regional Office for Latin America and the Caribbean, with the technical support from the Unit for the Participation of Family Farming and Parliamentary Networks uh, in Rome. And we have the pleasure to have the the support and coordination of the Central American Agricultural Council through the Executive Secretary, uh, Secretariat, SECAT, and we also have the support of Mercosur and uh, the RIAF and the Brazilian Presidency and National Coordination and the Ministry of Agrarian Development and Family Farming. In the last two sessions, of this cycle, we were able to learn about the paths that different countries around the world have taken to develop an institutional framework in, a, in favor of family farming and the process of developing the tools for registries and the central function of which is to connect farmers with this institu institutional framework to support the agriculture sector. Uh, for this last session of the cycle, we will have the opportunity to delve a little deeper into the process of developing the farming families of registries and how they are being connected concretely with po uh, policies and actions differentiated for the sector. Today, we are going to learn from the experience of Lebanon, Uruguay, and Brazil, and uh, each uh, panelist will have 20 minutes for the presentation and we will have a space for question and answers and uh, at the closing we will have some thoughts uh, that we will share and conclusions for the next event. Uh, to start with uh, this uh, session, I would like to give the floor to our colleagues from Uruguay. We have here Fernando Iskanda, who is in charge of the Rural Development um, Department of the Ministry for Agriculture, Livestock and Fishery of Uruguay, and he will talk about the development of family farming registries and how they are related to the public policies that exist in the country. Fernando, thank you very much for being with us. You have 20 minutes for your presentation, and I will give you a heads up so that you know that you need to finish. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. I am going to start sharing my screen so that you can 
see it. Mm. I would like to thank first the regional office of FAO for the invitation, our dear panelists, the government of Uruguay, and especially the Division of Rural Development and the Minister for Livestock and Agriculture and the Secretary General for the RIAF, Lautaro Rizcaf. Uh, first of all, I would like to tell you why do we use the family farming registries for the creation of public policies. After a social recognition and political recognition of family farming, we have the need to identify these subjects who are the family farmers. For implementation of public policies, for all the processes established in the UN uh, decade on family farming that you know. How do we do this? Well, the tool in the registry links public policies with the identification of these subjects. The identification of these subjects, family farmers, was made through a clear operation def operational definition of the subject development of a registration tool. And we link through public policies for family farming to the extent that these public policies use these registry, but if these public policies do not use our registry, then we cut the cycle and a virtuous cycle of action, which is very complex. How do we undertake this process? And uh, here I'm going to talk about the particular experience of Uruguay. Here we need to think about the context. We started with the context of the country. It is a small country in South America with uh, 175,000 kilom square kilometers with a population of three 3 million, uh, 286 people concentrated in Montevideo. We have a small rural population of 5%, and uh, that uh, population, which is 3 million, 200,000, has, has been very stable during the last years, uh, since uh, 1953. Therefore, we have special characteristics, a small country, a few population, and a few um, uh, small amount of producers. And the context involves that the process started with Mercosur through the specialized meeting on family farming, and we established common objectives to understand what is a family farmer. For Mercosur, we have a common uh, definition of family farming, family farmers, which includes the labor, the family in the participation in production, the residents, and the capacities for work of the farming family. Likewise, in the resolution of MERCOSUR that defines family farmers, in the same uh, MERCOSUR resolution, we can see the concept of the development of family farming uh, registries so that uh, with the identification of the subjects, we can create different uh, policies. Then, then we see that we kept uh, making progress. We had the permanent technical working group where we generated a space for exchange until establishing the mutual recognition resolutions. Therefore, a family farmer in Argentina, Brazil, and Uruguay are considered a equal uh, according to these resolutions. 
particularly in Uruguay, based on these regulations, we developed a structure, a regulation structure at the local level with decrees and resolutions to have different criteria and uh, variable sizes. For example, non-family work, which has a cap on hired labor, the Productive capacity has a cap on area in production. The family residence is considered in the production unit in a maximum distance of the production unit. And the family income that also has a cap on extra income. We were able to characterize family farming through a reprocessing of the general agricultural census. That uh, agricultural census in Uruguay, we are updating it by, in 2011, the total of production units, 72%, 62% complied with the requirements and the different characteristics. We have a universe that we can estimate. So why do we want this register? Basically for the need of uh, implementing um, differentiated public policies. On, that's why we created the Family Farming Registry. It has a regulatory base, an operational unit, it is in charge of a specific department, and it is in order to identify the access to public policies. In the processes we have done since 20, uh, 2009, the official data we have refers to 16,856 producers, which are uh, family units, and 29,426 are identified as family producers. This allows us to identify individuals and families that can have these characteristics. This is in order to have the implementation of public policies, and I will review them afterward. One of the first ones that allowed the creation of this registry is related to um, taxing. In Uruguay, it is mandatory for um, farmers to make a contribution to social security. This way, you can have um, right to retirement, and the policy was to differentiate the contributions contributions of family farmers that were registered to this policy in the ministry. So their contribution is um, inferior to the one done by other farmers. So since this is done uh, since 2009, different governments have gone through this process with around 10,000 uh, family units benefiting from this policy. Then we have the next one that's very important, which is a land tax in Uruguay, and in 2015, family farmers were able to have a partial subsidy of this taxing. So two uh, public policies of exception that makes the registry to work. Here you can see a photo of how the registry process is done and a map of the distribution of family farmers. Then the third policy is related to the access to uh, technical assistance and credits according to the general direction of rural development. The URL is number of summons in order to obtain differentiated technical assistance and uh, financial assistance. The fourth policy recently 
in the process of climate emergency related to the processes according to the existence of climate change there's the development of a few policies that is also focused on family farmers from there on once we have identified them not only in our country but also at a regional level we were able to access Using your reference, we established which areas were the most vulnerable to this process, and we started to give um, tools, first credits, then food, in order to address the lack of crops. In the case of Uruguay, the majority of family farmers dedicate themselves to livestock. And with the last drought, we were able to access, to give 4,000 family farmers access to credits with a subsidy rate that was significant. The sorry, the fifth. Policy. And in this case, it is the process of trading in the scenario of public sales. This is done from the registry of productive units, and through a law, we created the organizations of family farming that were provided to the state and we created a policy for public sales from the state and that's that way we would have specific markets for family farming this has been done for about six seven years and it has covered a series of important purchases and has given family farmers access to the market. We have done this national registry of organizations using the registry of family producers, and this allows having access to the uh, public sales. Then we have other series of policies that are also linked to the registry of family farming, the financing to family uh, meat producers, access to insurance in livestock for family producers, access to land, the uh, regulations in the use of seeds. We can talk a lot about policies, but what are the lessons that we have learned from this process? Well, first, the importance of the political regional context in the, age, in the agenda of family farming not only the international year of family farming, but also the decade and the REAF, because they have marked the agenda and have allowed us to generate actions in this sense. Understanding that the registry is a medium and not the end, the goal. We have seen this in many places. They see the registry as the solution, but it isn't. It is a tool that's useful for public policies. And we must take care of it so we can create better policies. The other aspect is pragmatism when using these tools. Sometimes we take a lot of time and we understand that using a few data, avoiding the access to controls or complex um, processes, but rather having a simple process that allows to have an efficient process for public policies. And lastly, the validation of the tool, not only through institutions with the uh, political will of the registry, but also the construct, the building from the civil society, uh, having a political dialogue, which is essential.
que existen en, en el caso nuestro Then, algunas condiciones que fueron habilitantes. In our case, there were some no um, conditions global, that were enabling for Primero, la having these registries. First, of course, of course, having regulations adapted to our objective. So we're talking about public policies and all of these regulations are on this line. The procedures are established clearly and, uh, and clearly communicated. We have, uh, it is binding with access to public policies. We also have a permanent support and management structure trained personnel committed with family farming, not only centralized, but also in a decentralized manner. So people that are related to family farming are related to the process. Then valid organizational structure and data infrastructure capacity. In the case of Uruguay, we must think that we go from a, region, a series of previous registries that are part of this registry. So we have the identity of the individuals that's almost universal, almost 100%, and they all have their registry with their uh, identification number. Then the rural cadaster, which was done many, many years ago, with all the rural information in which we have identified the registry of the ownership and also their productivity. We are a livestock country. Which basically has livestock on the land. So it is important to also have that registry. And finally, the registry of commercial activity, which is very important for Uruguay. So all productive units have their uh, commercial registry, or at least most of them. This also allows to have control procedures for applying public policies. Without this, it would be very complex in, for implementing public policies. And lastly, the capacities of civil society organizations, which help in controlling this process, not only social control, but also support to implementation, which is one of the strategies we have used. That social control allows organizations to collaborate with us in the process. Here, you, there's an example of organization in the south of the country that does this process. And what are the consequences? Well, a more efficient implementation of differentiated public policies, focusing resources on this strategic population and the capacity for public policy monitoring of family farming, because we can know how many family farmers are accessing public policies. And other consequences that are indirect, we have the registry as a display element of family farming, a few years ago, we did a visibilization and registry campaign that allowed all people to feel identified within family farming, which makes that collective building. And as a very high quality uh, product is to have st statistics and timely information. Not all registries can have all these characteristics, but if they have coverage, uh, levels of, of high quality and data, if they have information regarding support management, this way we can develop statistics and beyond census, our registry is contributing contributing fundamental information, not only for executing and implementing public policies, but also for designing these public policies, because with our registry, we can analyze where family farmers are, what they dedicate to, what are they doing, what are the relationships between them, what organizations they belong to, amongst others. And well, that's it. Thank you very much. And I am at your disposal for answering the questions you might have.
Muchísimas gracias, Fernando. Son, Thank you son very much, claves, Fernando. These are key elements. Everything related to social participation, social control. In the previous two sessions, we have also talked about that. There are previous stages of registry that are also part of this session. And we see that all of this for many countries is important for the countries that are advancing in registries. Uh, we would like to remind you that we have simultaneous interpretation in this activity. There's a button down below uh, with the shape of a globe and you can show, choose the language you prefer in order to Continue. I would like to give the floor to our following guests. Sorry if I don't pronounce your, your name correctly. I, she's in charge of the registry of Lebanon in the agriculture ministry of this country. She has very kindly accepted our, our invitation to this event. Mrs. Rima, you have the floor and you have 20 minutes to talk. I will let you know when you have five minutes left. Uh, hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, let me start by sharing my uh, screen. Uh, so, um, you can see my screen? Not yet. Now we are seeing, it's just not in full screen. Okay. Uh, okay, so I will be presenting uh, the farmer registry in Lebanon. In, uh, registry but this is for all the farmers this is our experience in Lebanon um, okay just uh, just a small overview Lebanon is a small country in the Mediterranean region uh, on the Mediterranean Sea uh, I will give just uh, also some information about the agriculture sector in Lebanon. So the total cultivated area in Lebanon is uh, two, 230,000 hectares. So this is a small uh, small part maybe in comparison to other countries. Uh, we have 1.3 hectare uh, only average uh, holdings uh, per agriculture holder. Uh, and it splits almost between perennial and seasonal crops. Also to have an idea about the total number of uh, farmers. So we have uh, 170,000 farmers uh, in Lebanon and uh, the number of uh, farmers hiring family labor, it's most of them, almost 116. And uh, just to highlight also that uh, only 42,000 have uh, social security. And you will see why I'm talking about this uh, social security and having social protection also for the farmers. I will give also an overview about our uh, national agriculture strategy 
for uh, which is a five-year strategy developed within the Ministry of Agriculture and the uh, two pillars of this strategy are directing us to prepare and work on a farmer registry uh, for the first pillar it will uh, uh, provide restoring the livelihoods and productive capacity of farmers and producers so this is uh, to ensure and facilitate access to inputs and to provide subsidies and vouchers, maybe, or loans or uh, whatever access to subsidized, uh, maybe, agri loans for the farmers. And also the uh, Pillar 5, strengthening the enabling institution environment which has two programs. In the first program, create enabling conditions for the development of agriculture and insu insurance also for the, for the agriculture uh, farmers. And uh, the second program, develop a social protection system for vulnerable farmers, farm workers, producers, and fishers. And this is what guide eyes also and what uh, uh, to uh, go for uh, the establishment of a farmer registry in uh, in Lebanon. So why farmer registry in Lebanon? Because uh, first of all, uh, uh, farm, farmers are not a formal uh, profession in Lebanon. So this is will allow to have the formalization of the sector to have farming as a profession, uh, to have a reliable source of information, uh, to get an easy tool to record, control and update data. Uh, also to be used for agriculture policy and agriculture sector management in general will be a very important tool to expand the social protection coverage for the farmers. Uh, this will allow also and provide transparent and fair distribution of any uh, support provided to the farmers or what or subsidies. Uh, this will be used also as a shock and emergency response uh, tool. Uh, also uh, for safety, uh, social safety nets and insurance, and also whatever future interoperability between concerned public sector departments and institutions. Uh, it was a very long journey for the establishment of our farmer registry. It's our, it started uh, many years ago, uh, at the beginning in 2010, in 2012, when we did our agriculture census, general uh, census, and from this agriculture census, we established at the beginning the statistical farmer registry within the, the, uh, the Ministry of Agriculture, and it was used as main source of data and information for all our uh, uh, activities. Uh, then, in uh, 2016, uh, a scoping mission for FAO uh, for social protection as an entry point uh, was done, and from this mission, uh, we get we, we we get more to understand how we can get to this uh, to get social social protection for the farmers. So we found that we have an informal sector. The agriculture sector is an informal sector. We don't have uh, social security or social protection for farmers for workers, and this needs to be expanded to rural areas. So in uh, 2016 also. Uh, to support or to improve our uh, knowledge, we get a study visit to France and to learn how they are dealing with their administrative farm registry there. In 2017, also with FAO, a pilot uh, project, a small project, was conducted in two regions in Lebanon. And uh, during this period, 500 uh, farmers were registered. Uh, we understood well what is our what are our needs, uh, how we need to, to 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 start for working, and it was the first step preparation of draft law for the establishment of the farmer registry in 2018, in which we needed to define what is a farmer, the activity, the holding, uh, also the farmer registry as a function inside the Ministry of Agriculture because it wasn't included until now. 
as an activity we didn't have the the, the define the roles and the, the responsibility uh, inside our organization then we have the national agriculture strategy what i summarized this part for uh, concerning the farmer registry in 2020 and this also uh, emphasizes also on the points that to continue working um, for the uh, establishment and uh, uh, for the farmer registry. In 2021, within a new project uh, financed by uh, the EU and uh, uh, delivered with FAO, uh, we uh, started uh, part of the project for the development of the Farmer registry. So we started with the business requirement and development of the farmer registry software. So it was to we needed to design the system, the architecture of the system, uh, to check what are the requirements, what are the components to be included in this uh, in this uh, system, where we need to put the, the hosting, um, the requirements for the hardware uh, needs also to be used for the system. So all this started in 2021 also in 2021 the draft law was also revised and sent to the parliament and uh, referred to the uh, commission of uh, uh, for uh, for uh, reviewing since that time in 2022 so we we had uh, like a, a, a uh, applications, the software uh, almost developed. So we started the testing with the users. Uh, we started the training for uh, Ministry of Agriculture staff. Uh, the issue of the hosting was resolved because we needed to have uh, a, an official body for the hosting as we are using with confidential data for the, for the farmers. And then, while working also, we had the issue of the electricity uh, cut in Lebanon. So this is a major problem in Lebanon. And uh, then we needed to equip all the agriculture centers where we wanted to do the registration with solar power and uh, to have the internet connection and to have the electricity to be able to receive the farmers during the day and to do the registration and not to be stopped. In February 2023, this year, it was the launch of the Farmer Registry with a big national media campaign across Lebanon using uh, TVs, uh, radio, billboards on the roads. And now, in uh, by end of September, we had 65,000 pre-registration, pre-registered farmer, and 32, almost 32 uh, farmers well registered in the system. This is a very, very good, uh, a good achievement for our farmer registry and for uh, for us in the Ministry of Agriculture. Uh, I will talk also about uh, the structure of this uh, of this farmer registry, uh, but because uh, before going inside deep uh, inside in it, I need also to to, to specify that uh, the farmer registry we developed the software is uh, composed of four modules. Uh, the first one is the concerning having uh, farmer uh, farmers uh, data and farmers livelihood conditions also farm data and farm asset and whatever information about the farm also we have another second component uh, containing the land parcel and location identification data and this is a GIS based module um, also using the the special uh, data uh, the third uh, module with the farmer registry is the farmer's targeting module. This is to enable the creation of sub-registries through the reclassification of farmers according to specific criteria and indicators using screening or weighting and ranking process and all this using the information entered at the beginning in the farmer registry. 
and also the four module for the voucher scheme management module and this is to allow us to provide uh, for any specific voucher schemes or uh, campaign and it will be issued automatically through the system Going back now to the part uh, of the farmer registry in itself. So for the farmer registry process, at the beginning, the farmers need to do a pre-registration. So the farmers will create an account and enter basic information about themselves to take an appointment. Uh, when they will take an appointment, then will come to the agriculture centers, uh, which are distributed all across, the Liban uh, across Lebanon. Uh, to register their uh, land, the farmers will locate their farm and complete the registration by providing uh, farm and farm workers like you data for in these centers. Also, they will be providing a proofing document because this is an administrative uh, registry. So, uh, need to provide for each information they provide, they will need to provide uh, a proofing document. And when uh, the registration is completed, they will get a registration certificate. After this, there is a step or phase for the field verification. Uh, and the Ministry of Agriculture will contact field validation of the data provided. And when it's validated, then uh, the farmers will be provided by a, with a farmer ID. So this is an overview about the farmer pre-registration where we enter in the system and uh, uh, this is accept accessible from the web and the farmers will create their own, own account. The farmer will fill just basic information as we said and the farmer will take an appointment to complete the registration using his uh, mobile phone. Uh, this is just to show you the distribution of the agriculture center among the, the country. Uh, this is the link to go and to do the pre-registration. Uh, now, in the farmer registry content itself, so the farmer registry, as we said, it's this, uh, divided into two parts. One part for the farmer, where we have a unique identification of the farmer for each farmer. We will have the farmer general data information about uh, uh, his family, uh, socioeconomic data, so livelihood, level of education, uh, any kind of uh, social insurance if he get uh, about the worker uh, data also and information about uh, the farm with identification of the reference uh, parcel and uh, knowing that the data will be matched with orthophoto and cadastral digital maps all incorporated in the in this uh, software we and uh, we entered also the classification of the agriculture land cover in the system uh, the animal uh, numbers also for the part of the animals with basic information will need to be entered and uh, the machinery equipment specific specifically for the year of production so these are the 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 uh, the, the component of the farmer registry. As we said, we have the farmer data, which includes the basic information, contact address, so household data, livelihood, family farming, uh, could be included, the dwelling, all the information. And then the farm data, which include the land parcel, we will have the map of the land, mapping of the land, drawing the map of the land, the location, the size, uh, on the crops, if it's seasonal, permanent, greenhouse, nursery, so different uh, at this level. Uh, then for uh, all the livestock will be entered, animals, uh, poultry, uh, honeybees, fisheries, uh, the asset, machinery, and a part for the workers also. Uh, in the farmer registry also, uh, 
uh, we will have a part listing for the dashboard. So when you enter the the, the, the system, we will have here uh, listed all the farmers. You can select one farmer, enter. This is for the employees, and. Uh, uh, and we will have a dashboard and we can see directly for each region the uh, different information uh, added. Uh, for the... Uh, for the farmer data, uh, so... Uh, uh, we will have the farmer information, as we said. So this is just to show you uh, just a figure about all what we have in the farmer data and also on the land parcel, how it's uh, drawn, how it is uh, delimited uh, by the uh, employee to define the area for each uh, farmer when he is in the, in the center with the farmer. And this is done with the farmer. Also, we have uh, one part for the worker. So this is the layout of the, of the registry in itself. And every time we need to add an information could be added here for the workers, for the farm unit, machinery, animals, uh, whatever uh, sector. And for each, for example, even for the animals, we have different uh, sections. Uh, it depends on each, uh, what uh, the uh, farmer has as uh, um, as information to provide. Uh, this is uh, this is more detail about the land and parcel identification. So in the system, we have the already uh, we entered one layer with uh, the cadastral map and with the delimitation of each uh, zone and or each uh, region. Also, we will have the satellite image. Uh, even Google Map also to guide eyes, uh, to guide us, and to guide the, the the person who is doing the registration to find the uh, uh, the the parcel he wants to to draw. Um, also, the uh, GPS can entered uh, coordinates can be entered so that the system will take us directly to this uh, parcel if we have these uh, GPS coordinates. Uh, I want also to specify, and that's why at the beginning we had some uh, some uh, uh, concern for the uh, for the hosting of the application or the software because we are dealing with confidential data and within the Ministry of Agriculture we apply a confidential data policy so it was very important for us to have the hosting in an uh, official institution and not uh, with a private, uh, private sector company for example. Five minutes. Okay. Uh, when we have the, the the registration certificate, so when the, the, the farmer enter and provide all the document and so he's registered, a registration certificate is provided, and this is a, an example of the uh, farmer ID to be provided. Uh, so this is just to, to, to have, uh, we saw already this about the farmer registry module, all the different elements. We have the dashboard, the farmer registration, basic farmer information, and also this is to emphasize on the functionalities of the, so the farmer will have a registration certificate, farmer ID, the data will be imported and exported within this, uh, this uh, software. And this is a powerful search engine with dynamic reporting tool and also can be used for audit, record, management, and we have uh, a system administration and could work on it should be should working on it online but we could work on offline if we started already the online to finalize the registration already started um, this is i think my last uh, my last slide but this is the main challenges we faced 
uh, at the beginning for the establishment of the farmer registry so it was for the hosting part of the data as i said it was uh, confidential data and with the economic crisis we have in lebanon so the server within the ministry of agriculture was down so uh, we needed to found to find a real hosting body official hosting body we had also uh, this is uh, we need to work on it uh, using internet and we have electricity issues so we talked about this and also it was a lot of complication with the software development in itself because uh, there was not real a uh, knowledge about the farmer registry to develop the software so this was also a took for us a long time to work with uh, with the company now during the management of the of the farmer registry so we what we faced as main challenges is this is document complexity because for each holding this is there's a specificity and when we request a set of document sometimes there's specific document needed for this holding and not for this holding so each time you are updating the list and trying to find solution for is uh, specific and for some areas we don't have maybe a specific document or whatever and also we have some issues for the farmers to access the agriculture centers because some farmers are living very far and they will not come to register and they are not maybe convinced about this registry to come and to register and also for the land and parcel identification because the parcel 50 percent of the parcel are not digitized and to find the parcel and to draw it so this is also creating more complexity within the, for the management of the system and that is Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Hajar. Eh, muchas gracias. Eh, creo que una presentación muy completa con todos los Thank elementos. Thank you very much. Eh, it was a very complete uh, presentation with all the elements. I would like to highlight that there is a process that took more than 10 years. There is an established call and there is a whole chain of facts and realizations that enabled the use of the registry and our colleague Stanga also mentioned that in his presentation before having the last presentation of this session i would like to say that we have uh, simultaneous interpretation available so that you can choose the language that you want i would like to encourage you to make uh, questions i see that there are some questions so that you can make your questions there at the end we will have some comments by the panelists about the questions but i see that Fernando is already answering some questions keep interacting because we're going to make the most of the time we have i would like to give the floor for, to our last panelist who is going to present the experience of brazil we have with our hedges bogies oliveira who is the ca family farm and cadaster coordinator of brazil and who have the uh, contemporary presidents of uh, mercosur riaf and who have been with us in all the meetings of this cycle you have five, 20 minutes and i will make you know when your time is up pedro primeiro lugar agradeço a oportunidade de compartilhar com com vocês a experiência do Brasil. I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity of sharing the experience of Brazil regarding the registries of family farming. I would like to thank for the presentation of Fernando from Uruguay and Rima from Lebanon. These were pretty interesting experiences and we were able to see that Brazil has a lot in common with his two previous presentations. So it is always good to listen to what other countries are doing regarding this identification instrument regarding family farming. Here I am uh, sharing my screen. So today I would like to share some of the origin, some of the history of the origin in, of the registry in Brazil. 
the base é, of regulations de that give this instrument a legal Fernando, basis, acho que esse é um its relation with public policies mentioned by Fernando, I think this is a focal point for the duration and sustainability of registries as instruments do nosso instrumento, né, as premissas básicas, a forma that are able to cover technical aspects, the way we do the registry and explain how they are included into the database. I will speak also, I will talk about the electrical system and how the population in a general manner and the executors of public policies for family farming, how they are able to access the data that are within the database, and then the conclusion to, in which I will present challenges in the implementation of the registry we are implementing in Brazil, which are common within the process. There's no registry or system that's created and doesn't uh, present challenges in its implementation. So I think this is natural for this process, and we will show that in Brazil, então, we went through a Brasil, process of changes recently. In the case of Brazil, I would like to share a fun fact. The administrative, administrative registry of family farming was created foi by the Central Bank of Brazil in 1995 when a credit line was created specific for farmers. It is called PRONAF. It is part of the national program of uh, family farming strengthening. This was created again in 1995 with a massive participation from the social movement of family farming um, involved in the process. And to manage these credit lines, então, we needed a to identify those who are going to benefit from them. This is where some criteria então, emerge to say who and who isn't a family farmer. So é, this is when da, da we start to see some clues mão de obra regarding the size of the agriculture holding, então, the workers and the production and the management that's done in a familiar manner. But according to the mão, central bank, they established who family farmers were, and sometimes they even uh, wrote a self-declaration in which they say, I uh, name and last name, declare myself, a family farmer, and this document was included into the credit line that was given by the bank with subsidies, with resources from the state, and this was given in order to cover a part of the taxes that were related to the credit line of the bank. So this is related with the sustainability and um, how permanent the registry is, and it is the origin that it is born from a public policy. From 1995 until 2012, we worked with a registry called Declaration of Attitude to PRONAF, meaning the credit line created the 1995. The Mas Brazilian uh, registry has a strong relation with this credit line throughout the 90s and the years uh, 2000 with the creation of the, the passing of the law of family agriculture. Então, there were many public policies that were related to this specific uh, target. So we have PRONAF, the access to credit, and access desse to a hold of public policies. É then, um when we identified the need to have a registry, familiar, there was a decree that creates a cadastre of uh, family farming that was in 
implemented it November last year. This was the decree was made in 2017, and it only was implemented November last year. So we can see that it took a long time. Então, rapidamente, a gente and we see tempo, que eu, Brazilian que agriculture in an ample manner without being linked with the credit line, or at least not that close. In November last year, we started with this, and we started to work with the cadastro of family family. And today we é, see the 2.0 version of the system. Regarding regulations, we have the law é, of family farming, um which was published in 2006. And here I would like to talk about the importance é, of the work é, that was conducted in REAF for family é, farming in general, que, but specifically né, for the registry along with Uruguay, which participated Chile, here today todos, and other countries é, like Paraguay, Chile, I will not mention all of them, de sobre but I think there we have a, a critical Fernando, thinking mass for this instrument that was already explained é, by Fernando, but I would like to emphasize the importance of such a space like REAF or the debate of registry Trees to say that besides our national uh, regulations, the laws and the decrees, we also continue with resolutions and recommendations that were given in Mercosur for family farming. Besides this law, we have some decrees and operational regulations regarding how the registry works for identifying family farming. But, so basically, we must follow three criteria. The first one is related to the size of the land that's being exploited, which is established at four uh, established in four modules, and each area has a different size in hectares, and we could say there's a maximum size. Then the workers must be mainly familiar. And the origin of their economic activities must be mainly from agriculture and livestock. This way we can né? see who are the farmers in Brazil. And then we have the link with public policies I mentioned, né? besides the credit line, dispõe, and here we have access, the axis a, of the uh, political actions. Para a execução dessas ações. And then he will, we will é, see então, who are using a registry as a base for the execution de crédito, of these de actions. We have financing, credit, we have a policy for guaranteeing minimum prices for family farming, a policy of agricultural insurance, then accessibility to the market, the reserve in the market where the market and public bodies that purchase food have the obligation of buying a percentage from family farming, especially schools and preschools that operate through the national program of a school food. Then we have the production of biofuels, and its raw materials are bought through family farming, programs of que é selecionado para promotion e para participar dessas feiras tem que ser registrado e o selo de identificação da agricultura familiar temos a política de assistência rural duas políticas importantíssimas para o rural que é para o rural e duas regulações que são muito importantes para a família familiar e também toda Which a parte de aposentadoria do, 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 do produtor, do agricultor familiar, que uh, tem um regime diferente do aposentado, family que não é, é rural ou familiar. 
than other uh, rural é, or agricultural então, uh, people that retire. Through this instrument, family farmers have access to all of these policies I just mentioned. There are others, but I will not mention them now. But it is important to mention that each policy has its own regulation. Obviamente, and the a criteria of eligibility is to have a registry é, in the cadaster, and na also you must uh, request the active registry in the database renda, of the cadaster, and it could also require other criteria like limits in the number of members of the family, então, limits in the revenue they get, ones um related to familiar. women. É... There are also, e aí, partindo um pouco para a parte operacional do, do nosso registro, né? After the quais são as principais of the do nosso instrumento. Here I would like to mention the main characteristics or of the instrument, registro, cadastro, né? the premises então, of the instrument. First, union. Mais de um registro da agricultura familiar. A origem, one person é, can only be related to one cadaster. The origin the family farmer has to be registered in the municipality of the city of the land they are mainly exploiting. So it is the family land owned by the family that they are uh, exploiting. This is free and this document has a validity of two years after it is activated in the database. So once this registry is done and declared in the database, it will be valid for two years, but after this period, the farmer has to update the cadastre of what it was previously informed. The essa rede, uh, process é, for signing base, up is decentralized. We have a network which has the different unions of representations of interest of family farming and other associations. Therefore, bodies that are representing family farming at a national level, at a state level, and at a city and municipality level, we also have technical assistance. O Instituto Nacional de with offices in each city, the institution, the National Institute of Agricultural Reform, they are the ones in charge of managing the cadastres. So those who are part of the program of agricultural reform that are also considered family farming. Iniciou um processo de autorização and lastly, e we recently included municipalities, we started with a process of authori authorization dos agricultores no nível local. So municipalities could hoje com mais do the cadastres of agricultures at a local level. We have over 8,000 technicians local. and human capital to act on behalf of these bodies at a local level, besides identifying family farmers, I already mentioned the agricultural reform, those who are part of the credit line, who are the ones who give a credit so um, people can obtain a parcel, também são públicos agricultural do nosso registro, workers, mas também people. as organizações econômicas da agricultura familiar entendidas aí como all of them como are registered and also rurais, the economic organizations in family farming like entrepreneurships e as associações in rural agricultural cooperatives and any é, other association that are also para recognized de through the registry é, that way they can have de, access de, to de, credit de policies institucionais, de acesso aos mercados institucionais. Essas são as grandes Or, políticas que podem ser acessadas por meio institutional uh, purchases or markets. Sistema é um sistema And through these organizations, they can have access to that. Our system is an electrical digital system. We have um login, a website where um people from é the uh, cadastre can log in. 
They have a unique login in order to have access to all systems of the federal government. In gov.dr, they have a unique log with which they have access to their account, a unique account. They entered the system and there they fill the form. And the important part is that this form, through our experience, we realized it must be simple and brief, as it was presented in the experience of Lebanon, we also have registries and documents to verify the information that is being declared on the digital system. We upload the information in the system, so based on the criteria of the law and what was entered by the person, everything is verified, and that way the, the farmer ends the process of registration. Here you can see our registry. It has three uh, potential situations. A registry that is active and gives you access to public policies that are destined to the unity of the family farming. Inactive status means that they need to update their information to have an active status again, or that they started the registration registration process, but they didn't finish it. And that's why it appears as inactive. And then we have a registry that is blocked, and they exist because sometimes there's a denunciation for because of, from a citizen, or when it was audited, we open an investigation to evaluate if the data that appear on the system actually correspond to reality. And during that period of evaluation, that registration is suspended. A registry that can be activated or deactivated in a definite definite é, way, and this will depend página, on the result é of the investigation. Then we have a website, a, né? sorry, a page in which you can do a public consultation to check the data of that né? registry. I can check the judicial, very legal, Eu posso consultar consultation e and I will enter the specific unique dados, number for that farmer é, and é, that way we can check if they have an active registry in our database or not. This was done a public consultation that was made having in mind social control. So this can be done with a legal or a natural person. This is related with the management of private data, and that way we can have a more social control. Let's think about the entities that are using our registry for their actions. And there exists a different format. Here you can see the website. Here you can see the banks that offer credit lines, and they will enter a web service. And here you have the data of the natural person you are consulting. And using this information, you will see if they have an active registry in our database. You can do other consultations, like the ones done by the central bank, who will validate credit lines done by financial institutions. It can also be done by the Ministry of Education, because they are the ones in charge of the National Plan of uh, School Foods, which is a program of family então, agriculture that offers its products for the different municipalities and schools. So we must take into account the complexity of the systems that feed all of the identity that are using the data that are in a registry to apply public policy. 
As explained by the Lebanon, we need to specify that we have an ID of the family farmer, and we have a great amount of data of that registry. We can see here a picture of the ID issued at the end of the registration process in our database to finish with my presentation, I would like to show you the importance of the family agriculture in Brazil. In the last agricultural census, we had as a result that 77% of the establishments in Brazil are considered of family farming. This represents 67% of people working in the rural area of Brazil. We're talking about around uh, 80 million people. Rural agriculture is about 100 hectares and Eu queria compartilhar com vocês o desempenho desse sistema atual que foi implementado. What we see here is the current system, desse, system that was implemented. Que essa fase First, we had some problems during implementation, é, and we have this phase that we have called CAF 1.0. We made some uh, improvements in the system, and we were able to improve the performance of the system. And since May of this Year, we have registered, we had 70,000 new uh, people who entered in our databases for each month. That is a total of active registers of 3 million families. We have to think that we have two registers. The active CODAV uh, declaration were active even if we don't issue this document anymore. Many of these documents are still valid and we need to include the other uh, registry, which is the one to which I made reference, where we have already 640,000 new uh, people registered. I would like to make reference to the challenges that we faced when we thought about a tool of this type. This document is to be inclusive and cannot represent a barrier for people to be registered in the system. We need to improve the way in which we register our farmers so that we decrease the requirements, especially requirements related to data that uh, are actually in the hands of the state. We need to think about a simple document to which the farmer has access. This document needs to be thought, always thinking about the family farmer. We need to use other databases for this document, for example, data coming from the civil registry. For example, I'm not going to ask the farmer to uh, enter the name. If I'm uh, linked to the civil registry, I'm going to obtain the name by using the ID number of the farmer, and I'm going to consult other databases. This registry needs to be updated periodically. I cannot have a registry that is too complex and a registry that we cannot update because otherwise, in three or four years, those who are going to implement uh, public policies will require updated data of the condition of this family. When it is too complex, this is going to become an obstacle that is not going to allow us to update the registry and have reliable data. Uh, farmers need to understand the importance of the document and the public policy executors need to trust that those data in the registry are reliable. In Brazil, we have a, a phrase that we always use, that we need to work always in a transparent manner so that we can have a social control through a valuable instrument for family farming like this instrument. I think that was all, Pedro, and I'm here to answer any question that you may have.
Thank you very much. It was a very detailed presentation, and it is a process of almost 20 years, and which starts linked to a policy, uh, the policy of family farming credits and the evolution of the process improves the tool and it is linked with other policies and strategies of the sector. I think that the three presentations are in the line of having a linkage to the in uh, inclusion strategy of in the family farming sector. That is the great message that we can take uh, of the presentations. I think we have some questions. Some questions were already answered by Fernando. And um, I have a couple of questions to me, Hajar, uh, especially related to what documents are requested for, for the registration. Uh, who does the registration in, in Lebanon and how do they reach 100% of the farmers? And also one question related to the information about the plots in terms of animal, plants and others. How often is this updated and how is it done? You know, and who manages the, the, the database? Uh, a third question also directed to the Lebanon cases is if inside register there is any types of uh, differentiation between the different produ production types no in terms of size of the production or, or, or other features una pregunta general a todos and the general question for everybody, Fernando answered to this question already. In line with the linkage that this registries may have with other policies, is it possible to comment about your experience on the potential linkage of family farming registries with initiatives that promote agroecology? Besides these questions, I see that we have a hand raised by Adriana Guzman. I don't know if we can activate her mic because we have some issues of connectivity in the region office, if possible, we can do it. So she can address some of the questions. Después a Regis y Fernando. And then Regis and Fernando. So first, Mrs. Hajar, and then Remis and Fernando. Ms. Hajar, you have the floor. Um. Okay, so uh, to answer the first question regarding the document needed, so especially we need for uh, a, the farmer ID or passport or uh, whatever to identify the farmer, also uh, justified document for the ownership of the land. Uh, if it's uh, owned, so document for owning the land or rent the land or contract of renting with the uh, duration of the renting of the land. Uh, for the animals, we need a statement from provided for by the municipality or the mayor to uh, state the number of the animals and which type of animals we have. If they, this is a association or uh, company or uh, it's a farm so any uh, official document to justify the, the, uh, the existing of this farm for uh, the second question uh, concerning who manage uh, the database and the update so uh, the database is managed as as i said by um, by the Ministry of uh, Agriculture and uh, it is hosted in, uh, in an institution, official institution and uh, we have the central, uh, in the central uh, 
sorry, in Beirut. So we are all the data are collected to the central and central unit who uh, manage and check all the information in, in the system. Also, the update it's done uh, normally whenever the, the farmer have uh, uh, new uh, crops. Uh, because it's important for the farmer to uh, declare also uh, what uh, kind of crops he has because uh, if we have any uh, program with any subsidies to be provided so need to focus on uh, which he has so it's important for him to uh, it's more important for the farmer also to come and to update his information if within four years the information is not updated and we don't have any news from the farmer then at that time the farmer is considered inactive in the system but it's not deleted so it's uh, kept uh, it's kept in the in the system uh, uh, for the uh, which level it's uh, we uh, we uh, we enter the information so uh, the the data for example we enter is this a leguminous crop if it's a permanent crop we have the uh, to the level that we can identify which crop uh, we have using the uh, orthophoto. Uh, for example, we can separate between uh, tomato and cucumber. So this is uh, this is vegetables. So we can register for the farmer. He has this land and cultivated with vegetables. But we can say we can differentiate a banana from olive olive trees. So. This can we can go at this level for the registration for the areas of the land, but not for the production. So we don't have information about the production. If this is the question related to the quantities produced, uh, it's only uh, the cultivated areas. I hope that slide. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for all the answers, and uh, if there is anyone who has any other questions, I will have a, a second round if, if needed. Uh, Fernando, te pasaría a ti la palabra. Uh, I give you the este floor, preguntas. Fernando. I know that you have already uh, answered some questions, chat. but if you want y to y add a comment and con, con the, con talk about the linkage este between other policies and agroecology. So, Fernando, you have the floor. Sí, escuchamos, ¿sí? Yes. Sí. No, lo que decía, básicamente... El caso uh, de basically, Uruguay, the case of public proc procurement in Uruguay, we específico. have a linkage, we have a specific para registry para uh, pursuant to the, the law for organization of family farming. This is part of the family farming registry, which facilitates, pursuant to law, organizations access to the market reserve for products and food. There is a law enabling the state to purchase within a reserve margin from the organizations who have a supply and as for agroecology the, it depends on the instruments in this moment we have a specific call uh, for agroecology transition actions and that call is addressed to the registered farmers the groups of farmers who are going to have uh, technical assistance and financial assistance need to be registered in the registry that is the linkage that we have with the actions and each instrument is developed in accordance with our needs. That's why it is important not only to have the registry, but also the instrument of public policy linked to the registry. Perfect. Thank you very much. And now I give the floor to Hegis. I would you like to talk about the linkage uh, to public policies and the potential linkage regarding the 
public in the farmers of registry. Oh. É, essa questão do vínculo com as outras políticas públicas, well, né, going back to the linkage, the linkage that no there may be with other public policies regarding agroecology in the registry, there is no a variable identifying that the family farmer is agroecologic. However, there is a guideline coming from the ministry today and the family farming and agroecology secretariat is a secretariat that is focused in, on actions to strengthen family farming based on agroecology. Just to give you an example, through the registry there is no linkage. However, there are some financing lines which are specific, for example, for agroecological farming. And it is the same case with technical assistance. There are uh, public contests for uh, technical assistance for those who are working on agroecology. So agroecology, as I see it, is a very important issue when we think about implementation of public policies for family farming. I think that this is something that could be discussed at some point point when we talk about the registries, but I see today as the registry as a general instrument that is the basis for other many policies to be developed, so that we can identify in a certain manner, the audience that is part of this family agriculture. I would like to give the floor. I, I could, we couldn't give the floor to Alejandra Guzman. You can leave your question in writing on the chat. With this, we finish this first edition of the cycle. Before closing, we would like to give, bring our main partners for this space so that they can make some final remarks. We have the honor to receive here Ambassador Mario Arvelo, who is the permanent representative from the Dominican Republic in the UN agencies in Rome, and also member of the Committee of the UN a Decade for Family Farming. And all these events that we organize are within the framework of implementation of the UN Decade on Family Farming. It is a pleasure to have Ambassador Arvelo. You have the floor so that you can make a final remark. Thank you very much for your time and availability. Thank you very much and thanks to all participants. Uh, I have learned a lot on, during this session. It is an honor and pleasure to address you from the presidents of the International uh, Committee of the UN Decade on Family Farming. It is uh, very important to have this third session of the cycle of exchanges on experiences of uh, family farming registries. This uh, space is very special in the UN uh, decade on family farming efforts to improve the sustainability of agricultural systems. We are promoting better public policies to support family farming within the framework of the UN decade and to preserve the natural resources and to contribute to rural sustainable development towards poverty eradication within the framework of the seven pillars of the decade and the 2030 agenda for sustainable development. We know that family farmers are uh, protecting the traditional practices and knowledge and they are heading the efforts to tackle global challenges like uh, climate change. Uh, with, so family farming registries are a key 
tool because they allow us to understand the needs and the challenges in the different regions and contexts. It is good to say that registries are not only databases, they are alive uh, instruments, useful instruments to boost a uh, positive change because they allow governments, particularly the policymakers and the interested parties, to address the design and implementation of policies and strategies to empower family farmers, improving their livelihoods and strengthening their resilience. The registries, as we have uh, heard by, uh, with the panelists who shared their, ex their experience, these registries ensure effectiveness and transparency of uh, uh, resource allocation and improve governance. So reaching the uh, decades goal re require more than theoretical frameworks and policy recommendations, which are essential too, but we need to work in the field. Uh, we have made uh, uh, for the third time this exchange, and this exchange spaces are essential. This is a meaning that provides a platform for that the policymakers uh, need the experts, the professionals with whom they are working, with the family farmers, and all this uh, data collection to share experiences and to learn from one another, from the others. These events are essential to uh, improve our understanding of the dynamics of family farming and identify innovation um, uh, Parts, especially the implementation of family farming registries. What I want to say to conclude that this dialogue has not been a theoretical um, exercise. We have heard theoretical uh, things, but this is a meeting with a practical approach and shows the cooperation spirit with which we work in the United Nations decade. Our cooperation and my work in the UN consists in mobilizing political capital, not only at international level, also at the regional level, like the case of Mercosur and SICA in Central America, which can create a uh, more favorable environment for the different uh, family farmers and we have mechanisms working with different countries. Knowing the importance of uh, family farming uh, registries, I would like to tell you that the International Deseo Management de Committee is very thankful to the Joint Secretariat, FAO, FIDA, and all the partners who have contributed to the success of this meeting. Together, we can have a different a difference, important difference in the lives of family farmers so that they can have the recognitions that they deserve. Thank you for your dedication to the cause of family farming. Thank you very much, Ambassador Marbello, for being with us and obviously for all the support you have done with the Secretariat of the Decade to implement the pillars and the actions and that that's why we're here. Now I would like to invite Ugalde, Mrs. Bel Melissa Ugalde, part of the Secretariat of the SECAC, the Executive Secretariat of SECAC, with which we have been working jointly to strengthen the regional integration in Central America and, of course, family farming. So, Melissa, thank you very much for being here and thank you for the support you have given to the organization of this cycle. So, now I give you the floor. Thank you very much, Pedro. First, I would like to convey my greetings to all 
los participantes y los speakers que hemos desarrollado durante estos tres webinars que hemos desarrollado de parte de nuestras directivas. Y me gustaría también que Lucía Rodríguez, que es la secretaria de Secretaría, que puede estar aquí hoy, pero que tiene que enviar su presentación. Me gustaría agradecer a FAO por tomar en cuenta la In, taking into account in the framework of the decade of family farming, and especially in the sub-regional uh, work that we have been doing since a few years in order to benefit the sector of family farming. The first pillar, which is in order to create a political environment that's in favor of family farming. The topic of registry, as you have expressed both the speakers we had today and speakers we had in the previous um, sessions, we have had the representation from Panama, in which they already have a public policy of family farming. All of those lessons we have learned, success cases and objectives that show the uh, importance of family farming, we in the region are still working in the implementation and creation and the awareness of ministry of agriculture. So they are aware of the importance of having those registries at a national level. We also had the opportunity of having exchanges with REAF in, because they have already moved forward in this path and we would like to continue working in this cooperation uh, environment and that way we will be able to have these registries and have such an important instrument to create differentiated public policies for the benefit of the field of family Farming. Once again, we would like to thank you for all your work in the framework of the decade of family farming. And it is very important for us to continue working, bringing awareness uh, to our authorities so they understand the importance of having these instruments. So Thank you gracias, once Melissa, again, and we will continue no, moving forward. Thank you, Melissa. Yes, we must recognize the effort that has been done uh, in Central America to have this regional plan of the decade. Um, and all of the effort you have been done in order to implement it, uh, facilitating changes of ideas, knowledge, practices regarding family farming. I will now directly go with the Secretary of the uh, Mercosur la construcción de, de este programa con que estamos trabajando y también obviamente uh, the REAF, the specialized meeting on family farming of Mercosur who has been working along with us and Muchas providing the support este, of Mercosur este, Luis Beduch, en de Luis, I will give you the floor now thank you very estamos much thank you Fao thank you Melissa we are doing a massive work es, es in our regions, no, and I think that the important thing. I would like to just highlight that this cycle of exchanges allow us to accumulate, to, to work with more strength and a clear direction de impact, no, de impact. along with Creo the pro temporary presidency eh, in Brazil that has an impact. We are amidst a moment in which our societies require accountability, require transparency, and to know where the budget, the public budget, is being invested in. And this has allowed us that registries are a medium, as it was said by Rami, by, by, sorry, by Rima, by Uruguay, and it explains why we must increase support to family farming. Something that was mentioned I would like to emphasize is that it requires interoperability 
At the level of our states, we need we have needs not only related to households, but also to climate change, to climate anxious action, to infrastructure, and this not only depend on our ministries of agriculture, but they also depend on how we have interoperability in the state, how we link with other institutions, which is so important when responding to to those needs. Registries are allowing us to have interoperability, allowing us to have a fluid dialogue and allow us to have an improved communication with other areas of the, of the government that have a response for our field. In the framework of the decade, the registries all the seven pillars are like a big engine or, well, eight in some cases. The registries allow us to consolidate this mechanism and have actions with a pact in the framework of the 2030 Agenda and Family Farming. So just congratulations for reaching such a high level and showing what our countries have showed. I would like to congratulate Rima. I enjoyed the experiences of Lebanon. We had superficial information, but today we could knew the situation in, deep, um, in a deeper manner. So I encourage you to continue working on registries so we can facilitate access to public policies because that's what um, Family registries, family farming registries for uh, public differentiated policies. Yes. So thank you, thank you very much once again. Thank you, Lautaro. And now I would like to thank again the Ministry of Agriculture and Family Farming from Brazil, who have the, who are part of RIAF and have the pro temporary presidency of Mercosur. Everyone from the ministry that have supported the development of this activity and in order to finish i would like to give the floor to in representation or on behalf of the regional director who is in the office of FAO for Latin America and the Caribbean. Luis Bedusi, you have the floor. Thank you, Pedro. I would like to start by thanking everyone that are here and have been in the two previous cycles of exchanges. This activity is marked in the technical platform, platform of family farming, which is an initiative of the FAO, and it is our responsibility in the regional office of Latin America and the Caribbean, and it is an instrument that's at your disposal for implementing the global um, action decade plan. It facilitates governments, organizations, uh, the scientific community, all the interested stake holders to have a space for dialogue, for sharing concrete experiences that allow us to promote technical innovation. That's why we wanted to include experiences from all regions of the world in this first edition. And that's why we started with registries, because this is the door to have more public policies. This space of the platform allows us to connect the pillars, recognizing the voices of the government, the uh, producer organizations, the supply chain. So this first edition, had the experiences from Uruguay, Panama, Kenya, Brazil, Jordania, Uruguay, Libano, uh, Jordan, Croatia, Lebanon, Croatia, Kenya, and we understood how all countries had advanced and offered solutions that are multi-sectorial and offer solutions to those who need it. We no, saw how, no matter the context, there país. are common challenges in no clave, all countries. So that's why it is key to facilitate, dialogue, facilitate a, a, a these spaces that allow to have dialogue. dialogue. 
as it was said by our ambassador Arbelo, and thank you very much for being with us in this dialogue. From FAO, we have been working in uh, helping countries to develop this resilient and sustainable um, agenda within family farming. So it is key to continue implementing these differentiated actions that will allow us to strengthen the field. In that sense, as I said, we have chosen for this first cycle to advance in the development of registry, which is an essential tool to connect government strategies with the real needs of the field. We have learned that it is possible to articulate differentiated public policies that are efficient and relevant and meet in a comprehensive way the needs and challenges of family farming. There is no magic formula. There are multiple paths we can go through. But we realize it is important to have political will and collective action. Only with the cooperation of multiple stakeholders, we will be able to have public policies and tools that will uh, empower family farmers. And that way, we will have a transforming agenda that will valores, drive the values, the contributions of family farming, and the look de, de for lado, inclusive and sustainable development. En, so I would like to thank the great support that we got from the Executive Secretariat, from the Agricultural Council, Thank you to all the colleagues, the contemporary presidency of RAF and Mercosur, from Brazil, who have supported us in building this activity. Of course, the Technical Secretariat, and to thank Pedro and every all the team for organizing this. We know it is possible to do this kind of exchanges, and it is important to have dialogue between um, regions. And Lastly, just thank you all for your time, your commitment. Let's continue working together. Mais inclusivo, mais uh, family todos. farming is the pillar for a more sustainable, inclusive, a resilient future for all of us. Thank you, thank you, all of you. With this, we finish today's session of uh, on family farming registry. Remember, we are going to public the um, recordings of this cycle and this previous ones. We will put the link in the chat. And we will do a systematization of the data of everyone that was that were with us today. So thank you very much for being here, and I hope you have a great day today. Thank you again.